Hello guys, welcome back to Sea Eye Fishing Guernsey. We've come out this afternoon, finished work an hour early. So we're gonna hopefully try our luck with some float fishing for garfish. Because there's a few in the island at the moment, a few showing their face. So we're gonna uh, set up with a bit of chum and a float set up. I'll uh, show you that in a second. And we're just gonna make a chum. I'll show you how to uh, do that with the bread and um, holy mackerel oil to get some scent in the water. And then we're just gonna put a bottom right out with scallop frills for anything really, bream, pollock, anything that wants to turn up really, wrasse. So yeah, we've got lovely conditions. The wind's behind us. Hopefully get you some fish. Let's see what we can do. I'll show you the So here we are guys. This is us uh, making our chump. This is for the gar fish. We're doing, so we've got some, um, some uh, sea water in here, sorry. Uh, loads of bread, white bread preferably. Works really well. Get a bit more bread. With the texture of this stuff, you don't want it too gloopy. You want it to uh, drift down the tide. Where we're fishing here is a lot of tide. So we get washed out. So we're doing, as I say, nice and quick, as much broken down as possible. You don't want any thick lumps really, so you go with your hands messy to uh, get a good job. Like I say, we're going to carry on like that. Looking nice, and I'll uh, get back to you in a second, guys, when we put the actual proper ingredients in to get those uh, gar fish on the feed. Happy days. So there we are, guys. This is the main ingredients we're we'll using. This is Holy Mackerel, the fish oil company. North Atlantic is absolutely brilliant for anything, really. If you could add, uh, if you had smell of vision, you could smell it from a mile away. You definitely don't want to get this stuff in your hands. So what we're going to do is in there, get a good glug of that in there, like so. And then you always want to bring a spoon with you when you're doing this kind of thing. You want to mix it all in and just keep adding a bit more because you want as much scent in the water as you can because the garfish is a uh, scent um, finding fish. It will come in on the scent of the um, like smell kind of thing. And once you get the fish in here, they uh, well, you keep chucking in handfuls of this every 20 minutes or so. Just keep the fish active and you'll keep them here all day if they're here. So that's what it's going to look like and add a bit more holy mackerel oil. Then I'll run you through what we're going to be using. And yeah, hopefully we're going to see fish. Look at this for a uh, view, guys. Absolutely stunning. So guys, we've got our float set up and ready now. I'm just going to run you through a simple setup. I say if you're new to fishing and uh, or you've got kids and you're after the garfish, this is definitely... Uh, the way to get them in all it is a nice simple setup all we got there to show you close up all we got there is our bead we just got our um float there any float will do another bead you're your uh, i think that's a half ounce weight another bead and you got your swivel there as you can see and all i'm using is 20 pound fluorocarbon line you can't see fluorocarbon in the um, water so the long nose well preferably won't see it but you can use normal mono uh, if you want and all we got is just a 1-0 Aberdeen hook. And as simple as it gets. And all you want, I'll show you this as well. So your float um, stays at the right depth. I don't know if you can see that there, guys. That piece of line there in the middle, the two tags, that's your stop knot. That When that um, when the float hits the water, the stop knot will go to the depth you set it at. So say you set it at three foot, the float will sit at three foot, or whatever you want, whatever you The long nose normally you're fishing between two to three foot, maybe four foot underneath the surface. They're a um, surface um, feeding fish. They don't go deep or anything. And then what we're going to do, we've managed to get our hands on some sand deals. So we're going to use some sand deals for this. Can you get some chum in the water? And hopefully we can get you a few fish. It's going to start with the bottom rod, get the tripod um, sorted, and we are well on our way to actually, actually catching some fish. Let's do this. So, guys, going to run you through um, <coughs> the bottom rod we're going to be using, ledger. 
nice and simple. We've just got a running ledger we're going to be using. I say this just for anything, really. I'm more uh, interested in the float fish and for the golf fish, but all we got, we've got our boom there, as you can see. We've got our swivel uh, and bead, sorry. Fluorocarbon 20 pound braid again, exactly the same as the golf fish. Uh, 1 0 Aberdeen hook again, and we're fishing in sand, so we're using a grip lead, so it beds in nicely. And all we're going to be using for bait today, guys, for these black bream and whatever turns up is scallop frills. That's as simple as it is today, guys. So, yeah, we're going to ban that in the water and let's see if we can get some of these fish. Well, sorry, guys, I didn't have the camera on. We've had our first fish. I was changing uh, marks, so I'm going to go down there out of the wind. And we've had a check that out, a lovely little black bream. So we put the camera on, now more has been setting up. The rod's literally been out in two seconds. We've had this lovely little black bream already. So happy days, we're gonna get this one released and hopefully get a bigger one. So there we are, it's one of the smallest bream I've ever seen. Lovely condition, look at that. Check that out for a uh, little bream. I said with the chum as well, it's not only for the garfish, the bream must come in on the scent as well. So yeah, it's a lovely star. Happy days, and you see the float out there, guys. A bit of a glint on the water, but I'm gonna pop him back and let's get another bait on. What a great star! for the kelp. <laughs> Great fun bream fishing guys. The way it's going I'll be putting the float right away and just concentrating on the bream. Yeah another little black bream. Happy days. Only fiddly again. But we're not bothered. It's fish at the end of the day. Give you a better show. They're pristine fish, absolutely um, in great condition. It'd be nice to get one of these a bit bigger, and we might do a cook up on it. There we are, lovely little blackberry. Look at the uh, quality of that fish, absolutely in pristine condition. If we get a few more of these bigger. There we are, guys. Look at that, beautiful. Two bream down. For a small fish like that, it hit really hard on the um, rod, that's for sure. But one last little shy. Happy days. Let's see if we get it. I was going to show you guys how to bait up the scallop frills. Easy as you like. Get your scallop frills. All you're going to do is just literally hook it around as many, uh, many times as you can. You're looking for the white uh, bit to um, the actual frill to actually um, hook it through. That's uh, the hard bit because otherwise it will fly off the hook. Like so. Packed in the um, float rod now. The wind is an absolute nightmare with it. Uh, there's definitely a few taps, eh? We're going a few inquiries again here, guys. Typical green bike, tap, tap, tap. Yeah, here we go. Come on. Yeah, 
That's the thing with bringing fishing guys, you don't want to be too hasty with the bite, you've got to let them take the bait first. And I've missed that, that went like a train. Wow, I've missed it. So he comes back. That wind is, hopefully the wind ain't too uh, annoying guys on the camera. We're going bites again guys. Sorry I put you on the uh, chest harness now. Because with the wind, the um, camera keeps blowing over all the time. It's had a lovely bite just then. Come on, go again. That's a lovely bite. Come on. Because sometimes with the bream, they hit the uh, bait and then come back for it. So that's why I say don't be too hasty to pick the rod up and strike. So with a bream, they've only got small mouths. So you'll rip the uh, hook clean out of their mouth. Well guys, I'm going to do one more bait up for the uh, session. It's been a really weird... Um, couple of hours fishing I had loads of bites but struggled to hook the fish again with those two black bream uh, sorry about the first one I couldn't get on the camera I didn't even know who was on so I was uh, sorting out my other rod but yeah we've had two bream I was going to bang one more bait out and uh, see and then uh, yeah we're going to call it a day but two fish is better than nothing so yeah hopefully it'll be free when we get this rod back in the water well, I'm going to call it a day there, guys. Didn't go as much to plan as I wanted. When we first had uh, those bites of the bream, I thought, yeah, we're going to have quite a few. But it went dead as the tide started to come up. We're, what, half tied up now. I find uh, the bream go off the feed when the tide gets a bit stronger. I like to fish from low tide uh, to two hours up or tide dropping normally. The water's slacker. So they seem to feed as hard. And the flow fishing, that was a washout. Nothing. Put sherbet in the water using sand nails like I'd usually use. They're not in yet, definitely not in Guernsey. They're a lot later this year, normally January time, you get loads of them coming. But we'll just keep waiting. But yeah, if you've enjoyed this one, guys, if you could uh, leave a like, that'd be really appreciated. And if you are new around here, subscribe if you uh, want to. That'd be really appreciated as well, because there's a lot to come on the channel in the near future. So yeah, stick around to uh, find out. Cheers for watching, guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.